everyone, my name is Nikki Rust and today I'm going to be talking to you about how researchers cre can create policy impact um, with their work. So this is designed for academics and PhD students who are interested in creating policy impact. Um, as a former academic myself, I know just how busy lots of academics are and they're pulled in lots of directions. So this is specifically for people who have time and are interested in creating policy impact. So what will I be talking to you today about? I'll cover just very briefly about who I am and then I'll talk a little bit about how policy works. Um, I'll also cover who actually is a policymaker. What do we mean by a policymaker? And then finally, I'll cover a few tips and tricks about how you can create policy impact with your research. Now, this is a really, really complex area. Um, I'll only um, cover a few bits and pieces here, but I'll leave my contact details at the end if anyone is interested in learning more. And just to let you know, all of this that I cover here uh, are my own views and not the views of my organisation. So, who exactly am I? I am a conservationist by training. I've been working in the environmental sector for well over a decade now, um, and I have got a PhD in wildlife management, that's in uh, Southern Africa. And also I've worked with a whole range of different sectors over the years, um, particularly wildlife NGOs, both nationally and internationally. I've worked at think tanks, local government, uh, the civil service, and soon to be the public sector as well. So I, I have um, an understanding about how to create um, research that informs policy as this is what I've been doing in the civil service for the last year and a half. So this is just based on my own experience. Uh, I'm sure there are lots of other ways uh, that you can uh, influence policy, but yeah, like I say, this is just from, from my experience. So I will briefly cover how policy works, but remember this is a quite a complex area. Um, so, you may or may not have come across the ROMEF cycle. So ROMEF stands for the rationale, objectives, appraisal, monitoring, evaluation and feedback. So in theory, what happens, particularly in, in the civil service, is a business case is created, um, an idea someone has in a civil service to uh, change a policy or improve a policy. So they um, write this business case with the rationale. Why should this policy be created or changed? What is the reason? Like what's gone wrong today? What do we need to fix? And then the objectives really are the goals. What are you wanting to achieve as a result of this policy change? Then it goes through an appraisal, uh, and that usually includes um, financial and economic appraisal, as well as looking at the risks and the benefits. It goes through monitoring as well to make sure that um, the policy is doing what it's meant to do. And then an evaluation, which can take place at the end or throughout as well to see again how things are going. And then that's all fed back to uh, inform future policy cycles. So like I say, this is what's meant to happen in theory. In practice, however, it looks a bit more like this. <laughs> it's quite messy. Um, so sometimes, um, the idea for a policy change comes, yes, from a civil servant, but often it also comes from ministers or perhaps it could come from um, industry, from the private sector who said this thing isn't working, this policy isn't working, we need change. Or perhaps from um, NGOs who are lobbying um, and the, the public are um, pressuring the, the government of the day to change something. So it can come from a whole range of areas. So. What then happens is the minister will then ask civil servants to look into this and um, come up with some usually uh, some scenarios of how to fix it. Or it could be that civil servants have done some research themselves and have, have found a problem and then um, present this problem to the minister and say, this is an issue um, and I've come up with a few ways of how to fix it. So like I say, it's a bit messy. But who actually are these policymakers? So I've come up with a, a fictional uh, team here. So you start off with the prime minister, who's obviously the person in charge. And of course, this is um, in the, the UK system. We have a prime minister. Um, in other systems, they have uh, presidents. And then underneath the prime minister, a whole range of ministers, um, usually the, the head minister of a department, of a government department, is called the secretary of state. And then underneath them, they, they usually have some uh, other ministers as well. Now, these are all politicians, and that's really important. 
because they depend on being re-elected. All of them are um, politicians for particular constituencies. And every few years, people vote on whether or not they should stay or um, leave. So remember, when policy is being created, the politicians will have this in mind. They will be thinking a few years down the line or whenever the next election cycle is, if I want to stay in politics, if I want to stay as a minister or a prime minister, I need to stay in power. So what do my local constituents think? What does the, the general public think? And they will tailor their policies accordingly. So that's the political uh, politician side. And then the other side are the civil servants. If you have a big department, um, like, I don't know, the Department of Health and Social Care, they um, will have a permanent secretary. So that's sort of like the head, the absolute head of that department who's a civil servant. And then underneath them will usually be uh, people like the director general, the director, deputy director, and then lots of other civil servants underneath that. And together they're called officials. Now, these are people who are not politicians. They haven't been elected by the general public. Um, they are recruited through fair and open uh, competition. And their role is to um, work with the government of the day to um, enact policies and to monitor them and also to work with uh, the general public to implement and evaluate uh, these policies as well. So when we say policymakers, we mean a variety of different people. And it is important to bear in mind uh, if you are thinking of engaging with a policymaker, who is it that you're engaging with and how is that going to influence what they think about policy? And remember that on the, um, the left hand side, the politicians are politicians. And so they will also be um, steered by what their party of the day wants, the, the party ideologies um, and their own personal ideologies as well. So um, I, I wrote a Twitter post um, about how researchers can engage um, with the policy cycle um, just last week. And I heard from some civil servants that work in other countries that apparently uh, there's a phrase that it is policy based evidence making rather than evidence based policy making in certain circumstances. So remember, if you are engaging with policy or trying to inform policy with your research, and you're wondering why isn't this going to get any traction, there's politics at play and it's complex. And also remember that evidence comes in a whole range of different modes. So there's scientific evidence, uh, you've got economic evidence, you've got social evidence, all of these different things are um, what ministers are going to be weighing up. So just sending a journal article to a minister and expecting them to change their policy as a result of just your journal article probably won't cause any changes. OK, so now I'm going to go through a few tips for how to create policy impact with your research. And again, just remember, this is a very brief summary. There's lots more that could be covered here, but I didn't want to bore you with the details. So when you're planning your research, there's a few things that you can do. For instance, you could be considering what actually are the policy hot topics of the day. So currently at the moment in the UK, it could be things like immigration or climate change or the cost of living crisis. And also be thinking ahead as well. What could the um, policy hot potatoes be in a couple of years time? Because, for instance, if you're doing a PhD or um, a postdoc or something that's going to take a number of years, you're not going to have your findings for a few years um, and by that point it could be outdated or that policy window the um, the area of opportunity could have passed so you also need to kind of be a little bit savvy about thinking ahead about what could uh, be the, uh, the interests of the day once your research is published but to help here you could look at relevant government departments websites to see if they list any evidence gaps now not all departments do this but some of them do usually they may be a little bit generalized uh, but you might get a little bit more of an idea about the the areas that each department is interested in and to help you even further you could actually get in touch with officials that work in these departments to ask if they've got any evidence gaps that need filling I'm sure that most of them will be very, very happy to give you a list of things that they unfortunately don't have time to do uh, that, that you could go off and um, to research. OK, 
So that was more about planning research. So when it comes to actually undertaking it, you could consider asking policymakers to be part of your research. For instance, um, if you're doing like a social science study um, that includes interviewing different people, you could interview policymakers and learn a bit more about their thoughts and uh, their recommendations and what they think um, is not working too well or invite them to, to workshops. But do remember the policymakers are very busy. Um, and so you may well get uh, some people that turn you down, but um, it's worth giving it a go. Also remember throughout all of this, it is useful to keep abreast of the political changes, changes that are going on and these policy windows. Now I mentioned this term before, policy window, it's, it's an area of opportunity. Um, so like for instance, with climate change, most governments around the world are thinking about how to deal with climate change. Um, and so this represents a policy window. So if you're creating evidence for how to fix climate change or how to adapt to it, um, the time is right, basically. Also, if you're a PhD student, you could consider applying to do a post um, internship. Uh, this again is uh, UK specific. So um, post, I think, stands for the Parliamentary Office for Science and Technology. Um, and this is a paid internship, it's for a few months long, um, and you will go down and uh, work in London on a specific policy area that needs um, evidence. So it's a great way of learning about how does this system work? Uh, I think getting first-hand experience about uh, policy making is very, very important. Uh, so if, for instance, you're uh, a postdoc or, or early career into your um, academic life, but there, there are other uh, ways that you can get involved with this too, like fellowships and such. So do think about that. And also, given that the world is a very complex place and that often there is this whole range of evidence and there's uncertainty in what exactly should be the right policy solution, it could be worth integrating a, a rapid evidence synthesis or perhaps even better, a systematic review to look at and interrogate the range of evidence and see if there are themes that are coming out. Um, this would be really, really useful for uh, policymakers. And then finally, when sharing your research, there's lots of things that you can do, but it mostly focuses on good com communication skills. So think about how best to communicate your findings. So think about your audience. Policymakers are time poor people. They don't have time to read through a 20 page journal article, usually, um, let alone reading 50 journal articles about one particular topic and, and trying to think about what the commonalities are between them. And also remember that both politicians and civil servants are not necessarily um, experts in that particular policy area. So, for instance, civil servants working on climate change may not necessarily, although this is not always, they may not necessarily have a background in climate change. What they will have a background in is how to create policy in the government system, which in itself is a very, very important uh, skill to have. Um, it's all well and good knowing loads about climate change, but if you're working on trying to create or influence policy and you don't know how to do that, then you kind of stumble before you've started. So do remember as well that you may sometimes be speaking to um, people that don't have the ins and outs of the technical aspects of your work as well. Um, and just in general, a journal article is a bad way of communicating your research to policymakers, uh, but a slide deck like a PowerPoint is good. I don't understand why, but um, it seems like civil services across the world love a slide deck. <laughs> Um, so if you can summarise your research into, say, 10 slides with some jazzy um, graphs and some, some kind of quick visuals, that will get your message across much easier than a 20 page or even 100 page um, technical report. And obviously just doing a slide deck alone uh, won't get you anywhere. You'll need to then run a webinar to talk through your findings. Um, so think about inviting policymakers and perhaps other stakeholders as well, like um, end users, other people that may well be using the, the results of your work. And remember to focus on these high level findings. So in these webinars, they'll probably be less interested in your methods or like the statistical approach that you took. 
and more interested in the why, why is this important and the policy implications as well. And as always, please don't use jargon or academies. Uh, try to think of, say, for instance, you are uh, presenting to your uncle or your nan who doesn't have a background in this. Uh, pitch it to them. And this isn't dumbing down your work. It's actually a very important skill to learn how to communicate complex things simply. So just in summary, understand how policy is created and reach out to policymakers. But bear in mind, they are busy. So um, if, you get, if you get ignored or turned down a few times, don't give up. Learn about what these policy hot topics are, um, including reading news, or perhaps you could um, follow some ministers on Twitter and see what they're, they're talking about. Engage with policymakers throughout your research and share findings in an accessible way. Remember, don't use jargon. So that's just a whistle stop tour of uh, my thoughts about how um, researchers can help create policy impact. Um, I've got my contact details here, uh, my email address and my Twitter handle. So do feel free to reach out if you've got any further questions. Um, I would be very, very happy to help. I hope that was useful.